Previously on Jeff and Jay Co-op the A1. Green Clock. Old Tube Station. Dick Whittington. Cat. Bridge. If you haven't seen part one of Jeff and Jay Co-op the A1, subscribe to Jay's channel or click here to watch part one now. <laughs> The A1 cuts right through the middle of one of the wealthiest streets in the world, the Bishop's Avenue. The average mansion here costs £12 million, but houses here tend to spend more time being done up than actually being lived in, which gives the neighbourhood an empty and creepy quality. There is one good thing about the Bishop's Avenue. What's the one good thing about the Bishop's Avenue? It's free parking if you want to go for a stomp on Hampstead Heath. <laughs> After a short burst of dual carriageway, the A1 slims back down to one lane. That's because this is where the newly built Hampstead Garden suburb was going to have its brand new Market Street. But when this road became part of the A1, it was now too busy, noisy and polluted for the market to come to life. And today, Falladon Way is a narrow, congested compromise that does neither of the things it was built to do. Ah, check it out, it's another mini. I'm getting away. Hey! Next, we get to Five Ways Corner, at which location a massive car showroom was intended to be built. It never happened, but as part of the installation, these were put in place, the Five Way Corner Animals. For the next two miles, the A1 and the A41 have to share the road. Opposite the BP garage, there's a concrete wall covering a hidden entrance to what looks like a dead end. But if you look at this, Basically, this is a slip road that used to be the start of the M1. Before the M1 was extended south to Staples Corner, it had a temporary tiny terminus under this bridge, which conveniently already existed because of a disused railway that nearly became part of the Northern Line. And Jay's made a video about it that he really wants you to watch. As we approach Mill Hill, there's a strange bedomed white building on the left. This is the UCL Observatory, built in 1929 when Mill Hill was a sleepy village with no light pollution. It has five huge telescopes for gazing at the stars, and it's still used as a teaching facility today. Best of all, it's open to the public. Shall we go in? No. That's Bruce Forsyth's house. At Apex Corner, the A1 skirts tantalisingly close to the M1 motorway, but the two roads don't actually meet, at least not on the map. However, just off Ellesmere Avenue, there's an access road for emergency vehicles which you can use as a secret entrance to London Gateway services. It looks like we're not the only cars doing this. And you get to the service station without actually having to go on the motorway. And of course, we have to mention the bizarre bit of trivia that London Gateway services is the target that will be blown up if HMS Belfast ever fired its guns. If we don't mention that fact, we'll get comments. Back on the A1, we cross another border. So now we're in Greater London, and now we're in Hertfordshire. We've now entered the green belt that surrounds London, which means there's not a lot to see around here. Dinosaurs! 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 When the A1 crosses the M25, it turns into the A1 open bracket, M close bracket, and continues all the way to Scotland. We can't be bothered to go any further, so this is where we pull into South Mim's service station and call it a day. Thank you, that was the end of Jeff and Jay Go Up the A1. If you want to see Jeff and Jay Go Up more roads, then ask us to, and then subscribe to his channel and my channel. That was Jeff and Jay Go Up the A1. If you want to see more Jeff and Jay Go Up the A1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, all the roads, say now in the comments. Subscribe to Jay, subscribe to me. Thanks. <laughs>